All right, so I've got some notes prepared in Photoshop and let's go through these before jumping into the demo. So the first thing which I want to talk to you about is perspective. Perspective is is extremely important thing to understand because it, it is the structure your environment is built upon. So if you paint a highly realistic environment but your perspective is incorrect, then it's not going to be look that realistic. It's not going to be grounded in reality and and it will lose the believability that it has to portray. So perspective is really, really important to understand. As compared to color, color plays a, a big part, but the color is not something that makes uh, or breaks your believability of your environment design, right? So what is perspective perspective is a technique through which we translate the real world around us onto a paper in order to show depth so this is the basic understanding of, uh, of perspective here is an example of some of the objects and 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 we'll see how these, these books are sitting in 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 the perspective so there could be a lot of different vanishing points in a single in a single image for example in this in this image we see that there are multiple books and every book is sitting on a different perspective and every book is going towards a different vanishing point and what is a vanishing point we will discuss in the next slide but before we go into the next slide, I just want to say that in the real world, there could be a lot of vanishing points, a lot of different perspective. But but as an artist, we need to control these things. We need to, uh, because there there is a lot of information, we need to be able to simplify things. So there are commonly uh, three types of perspective which are used. Uh, three types of linear perspective which are used so there is one point perspective two point and three point perspective so when it comes to one point perspective we have a vanishing point single vanishing point and on on a horizon line so the one point perspective is really important when whenever you are exploring a design and using the one point perspective eliminates the convergence of other vanishing points so if you have only one vanishing point then you only need to con consider and take care of only one point of convergence so you really then focus on on designing the environment rather than taking care of the perspective so one point perspective is really useful in that case in designing environment so in one point perspective we have one one vanishing point which is on the horizon line and everything which sits inside the perspective converges towards one man one vanishing point so in this example we can see how clear it is in this corridor picture we see that there is a horizon line in the middle where everything every line is converging towards and is creating a vanishing point right over here and in this example there in the shot is um, is taken above the city but the principle is same that everything is converging towards a single vanishing point over the horizon line which is the horizon line is here and the vanishing point is right over here and every every line is converging towards that even the even the clouds are sitting uh, uh, in the perspective and it and because and because the clouds are um, a 3d object they are volume they have a volume and they are not 2d so even they sit on the perspective
in two point perspective we have two vanishing points on the sitting on the horizon line so if we take a closer look on this one this is the horizon line and we have vanishing point one and vanishing point two so except for the verticals every every horizontal line will either go towards this vanishing point or towards this vanishing point in this example we can see how two-point perspective is working in real life scenario so except for the verticals these lines will go towards vanishing point one and both of them will converge to a single vanishing point on a horizon line and horizon line is somewhere over here and these lines will go towards the second vanishing point converging towards a second vanishing point which which is outside this this frame So when it comes to the three point perspective, we have three vanishing point and there is a vanishing point one and vanishing point two. The third vanishing point could either be on top or on the bottom. This is an exaggerated example just to just to keep it on a single page and to show you guys clearly how this is working. Otherwise, normally you wouldn't see that kind of exaggerated perspective conversions so we have this horizon line here and vanishing point one vanishing point two and this is vanishing point three so what is happening is that the verticals are also converging in this in this uh, in this one and the work verticals are going towards a vanishing point they're all the all of these verticals are converging towards a vanishing point and the horizontals are converging either towards vanishing point one or vanishing point two so if we are looking upwards we are gonna place the third vanishing point above but if we are looking let's say for example if we are designing a city and we are showing a bird's eye view then the vanishing point that the third vanishing point will be will be below below our picture frame so let's take a ex take a look at the example and see how it's working in the real life scenario so in this example we have our our verticals are converging towards a vanishing point which is on top then these these horizontal lines are converging and going towards vanishing point one and these lines are going towards vanishing point two our horizon line is somewhere over here in and in this example we can see that these lines are going towards vanishing point one these lines are going towards vanishing point one on the on the horizon line and these verticals are going towards a third vanishing point in this example the distortion is not that huge but we can still clearly see um, how this is working and you can see from this tire to this tire it is creating a line and this is going to vanishing point two So that was three linear perspective. So now I'm gonna show you another type of perspective that we we almost always use and we almost always see in our real life example, and that is atmospheric perspective. In this kind of perspective, what happens is that as things go further away from us, they they lose the the contrast and they lose the detail so the 
so the the, the things which are near to us will will have high high values their values and their contrast will be higher so for example if you see in this image the foreground has the value of 14 the midground has the value of 38 and the background has the value of 44 so as 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 these mountains are going further away from us due to the atmosphere the clouds and and dust whatever it is due to the that factor we see less and less of of the contrast and there is almost no detail in this example we can also clearly see that things which are closer to us have a very high contrast in the midground we see that the contrast becomes less we see that the value is 61 around 61 and as things go go further away they lose the detail until until it vanishes altogether in this one we can also see that the foreground is 2 the midground is around 22 and the background and these background mountains they 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 start to almost get disappeared in this area due to a lot of atmosphere so whenever we are creating an environment we need to keep in mind that the foreground will be darker the mid than the than the midground and the background will be much more lighter than than the midground and also that with the atmospheric perspective the dark side of of any object the shadow side will get eaten up by the perspective fairly quickly than the than the highlight so that's why we see on the distant mountains we see that the, the, the light side is is visible and the dark side is completely completely flat and has no um, detail so the dark side gets eaten up fairly quickly than the light side in this example we see that there are two camera camera examples so when we are designing an environment essentially we are replicating the effect of camera lens and when we are showing a an environment and we are showing establishing shot of an environment that is showing a huge environment we use a wide wide angle lens scenario the the wide angle lens scenario is around 35 millimeter focal length and in and the zoom lens effect which is around around 100 generally around 100 and above millimeter it starts from actually around 70 to whatever a uh, high you want to take it to um, it will be called as zoom lens so the the main difference between these two scenarios is that the wide angle will show the depth and the convergence more but the the, the zoom lens will flatten everything all right so everything this is the same but be due to the two different camera lens uh, we see that one is showing uh, the depth and the other one is compressing everything uh, other one is flattening the, the the distance and making it look like it is sitting right next to each other So there is another thing which happens, uh, which is called foreshortening. So foreshortening is the visual effect or optical illusion that causes an object or distance to appear shorter than it actually is because it is angled towards the viewer. So if we have the circle and, as, and that circle in the perspective will look like this, the, the size will become shortened and this is called foreshortening 
the square becomes in the in the perspective it becomes distorted and it will look like this and this is called foreshortening <laughs>